So with today's topic, I would like to emphasize the importance of vocabulary. Then again, this is um, a compilation of minor aspect of vocabulary pertaining to both the writing and speaking subtext. So why are we very particular with the vocabulary aspect of our language? Well, for one, vocabulary and lexical resource is assessed in writing, so it is important for candidates like you to make good use of available words in your composition. And naturally, with the speaking examination, you will also be assessed when it comes to your use of words and how you are going to use it to communicate in well English. So let's first talk about the writing task one. So if you are general training, I don't want you to leave the meeting because some of the important phrases that I will be tackling in this area is also going to be useful in your composition in task two. So vocabularies in writing task one for academic module. This is very important because academic, you are going to encounter different variations of your examination for task one. Hence, it is important for you to shift from one type of um, language use to another with little to no difficulty. So that is your challenge. No? So the main reason why academic writing is going to be challenging is because it could be differentiated into eight types. So by category, we have the diagram and we have the graph. So for diagrams, you will encounter illustrations, maps, flowcharts, and processes. And for graphs, we have the line graph, bar graph, pie chart, and table. So starting next week for academic, you will encounter a weekly replay of our writing task one. So I would like you guys, I'm inviting everyone to please make sure to give effort in watching the replay from start to finish because everything that I will tackle during those replays will be imperative in your writing task one journey. So it is essential for candidates like you to use the words appropriate for a certain task. So obviously, if you're going to encounter a line graph in your examination, then you have to use the line graph language more often as compared to the other types. So it's very um, easy to understand why we have different specific lectures indicated for a particular type of task. So I will be discussing the individual lectures during the replay. So most probably this will appear either on Tuesday or Thursday. So I will discuss line graph, for example, and I will tell you everything you need to know, the words you have to use, the phrases you need to make yourself familiar with, and the uh, group of words that you need to feature in your generation of your task. So you need to watch it. You need to religiously start and finish it. So we have the eight types of writing task one. So I have differentiated these eight types. So once again, it's very obvious. If bar graph is the one that you will encounter, then you have to make good use of your comparative analysis. So if you're going to encounter maps, then you have to use words that indicate directions. Simple as that. So when you say words that indicate directions, we have north, south, center, adjacent, neighboring, nearby, and words like those. But for bar graphs, you have to use two times more, three times less, uh, twice as many as, bigger than, greater than. So I just want to give you this comparative analysis, why they are so different. Definitely the reason why you need different words is because they require different ways to present. Okay? So... If you're academic, you need to make good use of the following words 
data, figure, number, amount, quantity, percentage, proportion, ratio, and rate, all of which will be equally essential in your writing task one preparation. So we don't want to take this writing task one for granted because this still will be, this will still be about 33% of your total writing score. So if you're going to get a failing score here, you need to use your task two compensation of eight for you to get at least seven. And these days, we don't see anyone getting eight very regularly. So out of the 7,000 people I taught IELTS, it's just two candidates who were able to manage getting an eight on their exams in writing. So for this to function, for you to get a decent score, at least in writing, then you have to also make your task one work for your benefit. And that means you have to make good use of words. So now that we are done discussing the importance of writing task one academic, we need to uh, give you some insights on what words or phrases commonly found in a writing task one. Now, once again, general training, this will also be indicated to you since phrases like the number of, the quantity of, the amount of, you will still encounter them in your task two. And you need to make good use of them in your task two as well. So what I mean to say here is that although this is really indicated for academic, GT, you can still learn a thing or two if you're going to stay uh, as I cover the vocabulary for writing class one academic, because this will also be common. They will also appear and you will be using them in your writing class to your general training. So for academic, look at this, number. So number is a word that, once again, we're going to consider presenting a graph. What do you see in a graph? Well, basically, a bunch of numbers and figures and percentages and stuff, right? So if you're going to see such symbols, such numerical uh, expressions, then you have to use words that give them identity. And there's no other word than this one in front of you, number. We see numbers. We will use this word. The problem is most people cannot use the word number properly. So the question is, sir, how can I use the word number properly if I decide that I will use it in my writing, either in a statistical report for academic task one or in a writing task two essay writing? Because this could also come in handy for everyone. So when you use the word number, it must still, it must uh, first, sorry, it must first be preceded by the article that followed by the preposition of the number of. Can you guys say that? The number of. So that is how you make this phrase work properly, both vocab-wise and grammatically. The number of. Now, it should be followed by a plural noun. So example, anything that is plural, books, the number of books. Is this properly generated? Yes, because according to the rule, if you're going to use the word number, meron damo na sa umpisa, may off pagkatapos, pagkatapos nun, plural noun ang kasama. Tama ba yan? That is absolutely correct. The number of visitors is an example. The number of chairs, for example. We have the number of students, the number of citizens, the number of inhabitants, the number of books, the number of people who use the internet these days is staggeringly high. So that is one way to put it in a task two. But if we're going to use it in your task one academic, the number of students enrolled in Union University was 28,700 during the year 1991. That is just an example. That is how you present a report. 
that is how you write it academically and statistically. And following the rules of vocabulary, there should be the article, the in front, and the conjunction of followed by a plural noun. If you're not going to write the noun that is plural, it will be regarded as a grammatical flaw and will be reflected off of your score. So once again, we want to make things work for our benefit. Definitely, we need to consider writing this in its proper order. Now, we have different types of nouns. So one type of noun that we know is what we call the countable noun. So anything that you can count, objects that you can touch, um, things that you can see, that you can count with your finger. Like, let's say, in rollies, you can count them. Let's say this month, we have 40 new enrollees. So we have windows. Can you count windows? Yes, five windows, six windows. Can you count doors? Yes, you can count doors. Can you count uh, clothes? Yes, you can count clothes. So anything that you can count, that is very simple. Count noun. Okay, napaka simple po. And if it is a count noun that is in the plural form, you put the number of. Now we also have this another, this other branch of countable noun that is basically stressful to count. Na, sabi nila basically hindi, hindi siya basically impossible, but basically dreadful to count. So when you say that, that is a noun that exists in a physical plane which is either in a powder or liquid form, okay? So if it is in a powder or liquid form, we will refer to it as non-count noun, okay? Again, you can count it if you want. Sabi nga nila nung pandemic, pag board na board ka, pag iwahiwalayin mo yung granules ng 3-in-1, pwede naman eh, di ba? Chaniin mo, walang problema. Kumuha ka ng microscope. But once again, it's basically stressful. It's basically dreadful to do so. And in English, they are not actually, um, they do not agree that you count it. So essentially, what we do here is if the noun is in the powder form, if the noun is in the liquid form, we refer to it as non count, as is. So, napaka simple. Ano ba yun? Pumunta ka ng kusina. Anything that you can see in the kitchen, most probably. This can be regarded as uncount noun or non-count noun. So we have powder form, sugar. Okay. If you're pertaining to the uh, nutrition's point of view, if you're talking about the science behind sugar, we have mono, poly, bi disaccharides. We call it sugars. Pwede, lagyan ng S. But that is in the scientific analogy. So in the language formal appearance, we refer to it as sugar lang because we're pertaining to just one type of it as a generic term. So the generic sugar is an uncount noun that you do not put an S or ES. So ito po siya, may coffee tayo, tama? may milk tayo, so kompleto na. So we have coffee, you put sugar to it, you put milk, Tapos maglalagay ka pa ng hot water, wala rin pong S yun. Dahil siya ay nasa liquid form. So yung kape mo pa lang sa umaga, non-count noun na. Ketchup, mayonnaise, okay? Pepper, salt. So you do not consider them as a count noun that has a plural form. So most essentially, for you to understand anything that is in a liquid or powder form, disregarding the area of science in it, with referring to the language behind it, this should always remain singular. Clear? And when it does remain singular all throughout, and it is uncountable noun, we cannot use the word number for it anymore because it doesn't fit the requirement. What are we going to do now is to use either the word amount or quantity. 
And how are you going to use the phrase? Again, salpak mo na naman si the sa umpisa. The amount of or the quantity of plus the uncountable noun that is not, cannot be, will never be, come a plural version of it. Just remains singular. The amount of sugar, the amount of salt, the amount of milk, the quantity of water, the quantity of pepper, the quantity of chocolate, okay? Money, yeah. So we use it in this specific requirement. Are we clear? So academic, nakadalawang uh, word pa lang tayo. Okay? So that is how you use the phrase, the number of. It must be followed, followed by a plural noun. And that is the way how you use the amount or quantity of. It must be followed only by an uncountable noun that is in a singular form. What about the proportion? The proportion is used for describing percentages. So it's very easy to remember. If your task and if your task is in a graphical form, line graph, bar graph, pie chart table, and you see this symbol, then you use this. And it is appropriate. It is indicated for that. Makakita ka ng tinatawag nating percentile symbol. Yeah. So we use it. Okay? We use it, this word proportion. We use this to describe percentages. So nakita mo lang, 98. Nakita mo, 12,762. Pwede mo bang gamitin si proportion? No. Kasi pa-indicate siya, no? Not numbers. Sa percentage mo lang siya pwedeng gamitin. So nakakita ka ng pie chart. Okay, may pie chart ka dyan. Ayan yung pie. Tapos ito ay 12%. Halimbawa, pwede ko bang gamitin si proportion? Yes. The proportion of enrollees in Union University is 12%. Ganun. So that is how you use the phrase, the proportion of. It must be followed by a plural noun. The proportion of people, the proportion of students, the proportion of subjects, the proportion of women. Yeah. Now, what about figure? Actually, Figure will be one of our lifesavers in a writing task one academic. Why? Why am I boldly claiming that figure is going to be this helpful in our academic uh, composition? Well, you see, you can use the figure, that phrase, the figure four, followed by a plural noun. You can use it for uncountable noun. You can use it for countries. You can use it with percentages. You can use it virtually in almost all situations you can think of. So I have here a sample of using the figure for. Once again, this phrase must be complete. The figure for plural noun, the figure for books, the figure for windows, the figure for students. Is that correct? Is that proper? Yes. Can I use it with uncountable noun this time? The figure for pepper, the figure for coffee, the figure for water, the figure for milk. Can I use it like that? Yes. Can I use it for countries? Like the figure for Philippine stock market shows a decrease of 5% after a year. Yes. Can I use it with percentages? The figure um, rose to 10%. The figure increased to 
directly, you can use it with percentages. That's why this phrase is going to be a lifesaver if we are pertaining about the uh, statistical report. Ratio. If we want to showcase relationship in quantity, amount, or size between two more things. Once again, um, if you are considering the language used in IELTS writing, ratio is important for both bar graph and pie chart. Naturally, if your table is indicated in either the bar graph or pie chart format, then you are also required to use this word. Why? Well, according to the task response, one of the parameters examiners use in critiquing your work, ratio is one of the words that can show comparison. And that is your goal to compare and contrast figures for and against. So definitely, if you encounter a pie chart, a bear graph, or table for this regard, then you need to make good use of this word. So example, the ratio of students to teachers in the school is 9 to 1. So I have here, for example, um, the enrollees for... Niner, uh, 1,100, and the enrollees of our competitors, around 100. So this is 11 times, diba? 11 times more. So pwede mong sabihin na the ratio of Niner enrollees versus its competitor is 11 to 1, which means 1,100 versus 100. So you do the math. Okay? That is exactly what you do for this type of uh, example. So ratio, that is how you use it. For the word data, okay, data, 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 this is going to be critical because not many people use this word properly, okay? Not many people use the word data properly. And today I'm going to indicate exactly how to properly use the word data. So you can use the word data either as a singular or a plural noun. So this is a double-edged word. This will be a uh, very helpful content to you. This will also be problematic. Why? Because for you to determine whether a noun is singular or plural, you have a lot of factors to consider. Okay? So what are the parameters why you decided data being singular or data being plural? By the way, the main reason for that, the main reason for this dilemma is because data belongs to the group of noun, which is what we call collective noun. And a collective noun can function either as, as a plural or as a singular noun, depending on the user's point of view. So if I'm going to give an example of another collective noun besides data, I will use the word zenith. So this is um, a term that we use for the area of the government where senators belong to. We call it zenith. So if we're going to use the word senate and I am going to use it as singular, I need to consider it as a unit. So if I'm going to use it in a sentence like this, the Senate is, the Senate has, ganun yung proper, the Senate has imposed its decision to bring back capital punishment. Now, if I'm going to um, regard Senate now as a plural noun, there must be interaction among the members of the group. So I will be mentioning something like the Senate are arguing amongst themselves. So that is how you uh, differentiate whether a collective noun is a singular or plural uh, version, it depends on the point of view of the user. So once again, we don't, we don't have this liberty to waste a lot of time just considering whether this word data is uh, plural or singular. So we don't have this freedom. You know? Kasi we only have 20 minutes to do your task one. So the faster you can make it, 
the better results you will have because you can focus your um, remaining time checking your work. So my suggestion is do not use data like this. Because when you use the word data at the very beginning of your introductory paragraph, it can either mean shows, it can either mean show, because it is either a singular or plural noun. So we're not so sure. Bakit hindi ka sure? Ikaw nga yung user, sir. Bakit hindi ka kamo sure? Well, the thing is, nasa umpisa pa lang ako. Nasa very first part pa lang ako ng writing. Again, this is the second word. Can you imagine that? I don't have a reference yet. That is why considering data either as a singular or plural can backfire. Baka pwedeng bumalik sa'yo yan. Kung inilagay mo singular, tapos later pala, you are showing some uh, comparisons between the data set, then dapat pala plural, may isip ng examiner yun. So magpa-backfire yan sa'yo. That is something that we don't want to happen. Something that we want to avoid. So sir, you mean to say, I should completely forget the word data. I should completely disregard data now. Actually, I'm not implying that data is a bad word, that data is prohibited. All I'm trying to say is that I don't want you guys, the candidate, to use the word data to begin your um, sentence as a second word. Now, what I want you to do is to use data now as the fourth word. The graph and then verb shows and then put the word data. Data about, data on. The line graph compares data about men and women um, as regards to their hobbies during the year 1997. So am I saying that the word data is bad? No. All I'm trying to say is that if you put the word data as the second word, this can have catastrophic consequences when it comes to the vocabulary aspect of your language use. But if you're going to put it on the first word, then that becomes a lot better. Don't you think so? Okay. So now that you already know how to use the word data, I also have here the words that you can use in the introduction. So these are all the words that you can make good use of if you are writing an introduction for your task one. So here, I will be using my highlighter to give you an idea. Ano ba yung mga bet ko dito ang gamitin? Bakit mas gusto ko tong mga nasa ilalim? Ito. Kaysa doon sa mga nasa itaas. Ma'am Giselle, maaari mo bang sabihin ang ating tanong? Bakit? Kasi yan mas gusto ko yung mga nasa ilalim kasi nasa... Much longer. Simple as that. Yun na. Lang tayo pag-uusapan ko. Yun lang yan. Okay. Yun lang po. Yun lang. Ang nakilan ko, ba't mas preferred ko? Yung nasa ilalim ng mga ito na hinighlight ko? Kasi mas mahaba. Di ba? What if you were you were about to pass but you only wrote 149 words, guys? Kulang ka. 149 words. Anong sabi natin if you're going to write fewer words than what is indicated? The examiner will give you A penalty. So we don't want to write anything below the 150 mark. So 150 or uh, longer is what we prefer more. So if you're going to use phrases like gives data on, gives information about, presents information about, shows data about, better. So now, let me give you an example. Uh -huh. So if I have here a task description that says uh, the line graph shows information 
about men and women literacy rates in India during 1976. So it is very helpful to identify that the words used in your task description, we call this the task description. So we are going to convert it into introduction. So line will now become the presentation. Uh, shows will now become illustrates data on male and female literacy rates or percentage of literacy in India. The study was conducted in 1976 as your second sentence. So you see what I did here? What I did first is that I underlined keywords in my task description because I want to avoid including them as they are in my very own introduction since examiners will not be convinced that my lexical resource is deep enough. May isip niya, teka, ba't paulit-ulit lang yung words na ginagamit niya sa introduction? Ayun lang din yung words na nakalagay sa task description. Sabihin, hindi malalim ang kaisipang vocabulary niya. No? So for us to prove that we are worthy of receiving a higher band score related to both vocabulary and task description, avoid repeating all the words from the task description. You can replace them with at least four to six synonyms. I'm not saying you need to avoid repeating all. Kasi in this case, I still use the word literacy rates because that is the safest way to introduce it. I don't want to go overboard about it. So that is the case here. So why did I cross out some words? Well, examiners po ang nagsabi, hindi po ako, hindi ko lang napanaginipan ko, ayaw na daw to ng mga examiners. Ano? If your word begins with de, it means there is an essential action, there's an indicated action, like depicts. Diba? Pag sabing depicts, it unravels, it uncovers. Diba? Hindi naman daw to secret eh, na nakakover. Kasi ito nga, nakashow to sa'yo, nakikitang-kita mo siya. So what's the point? Denotes, delineates, pwede po si delineates, but this is only specifically for line graph. Si describes, okay lang din, but that's quite risky because you're not, ju you're not just going to describe it, you're going to report it in a statistical manner. That's why, once again, I would like to give emphasis on the words seeing below na gives data on, mas okay. Si gives information on, mas better. Presents information about, much preferred. Shows data on, shows data about. That is what I particularly like. So that is the reason behind it. Any questions so far? So once again, for those of you attending via Zoom, you can use the chat feature of our Zoom meeting to ask any questions. I turned off the um, audio and video capabilities because may iba kumakain, may iba nasa higaan pa, may iba nagyoyosi pa. So para hindi lang po kayo nakikita dito sa video at makakadistract sa mga classmates natin. Kaya po pinatay ko ang inyong mga video. No? So, if you guys have any questions over there at Zoom, just make sure to use the chat feature so that I can attend to your need right away. So, what's the difference between present and represent? Okay. Not that much. Okay? If people will ask me, Sir, do you want me to use represent? Yes. Do you want me to use present? Fine. But why, when I made my essay, when I made this statistical report that you specifically said you can use represent and present, you mark it as improper. Bakit niyo po minali? Well, kasi you used the word present or represent wrongly. Okay, what do I mean? Si present po, ginagamit yan for intro. Napakasimple lang. Madali lang tandaan. Pag Pre, intro. Pag re, pre, uulit na siya. So, ibig sabihin, tapos na po yung intro, sa body na siya. Specific detail na siya. So, presents, indicated for introduction. Represent, indicated for the body. Yun lang po, wala pong mistake dyan. You just have to put them where they are exactly needed. Next, time expressions. So not only you will encounter 
time expressions in line graph, bar graph, table, pie chart, you will also use time expressions in maps. So let me give you an example. We have encountered before a map that compares, um, let's say map of a reading university. Map of reading university. So, meron ka ditong map. Sige, square, square na lang para mas madali. So, you have here the main campus. You have here the Yan. Halimbawa lang. Ano? So may bilog din. Bawa lang. Ito po yung mapa niya. But this is the map of Reading University during the year um, let's say 1980. Tapos may nakalagay dito sa baba niya, present. So yung main campus, halimbawa from being just one boring building in the middle. Nagkaroon siya ngayon ng left and right wing. Diba? Nakita niyo? Yung mga changes. Tapos yung kaninang blue. The rectangle. Nagkaroon siya ng isa pang. Kasing laki niya. Kasi itong rectangle, for example, sige, pangalanan natin sila. Ito yung main campus. Ito naman yung kanilang... Um, Gymnasium. Tapos, andito yung kanilang cafeteria. Andito yung library. Nakikita? Halimbawa lang, ano? Tapos, ano pa ba pwedeng lagay dito? Clinic. So, tapos ito, basketball court. Tapos, ito naman ay swimming. Dito naman ay swimming, pools, Olympic size. Tapos naglagay din sila dito ng uh, isang maliit na changing room. So bilog naman siya halimbawa. Yan, dito. Andito yung changing room. Tapos yung cafeteria. Kanina. Yan. Lumaki na siya. Naging four times yung kanyang size. Yung library, naging ganyan na siyang kalaki. Tapos yung clinic, nahati na siya into one medical and one dental. At may laboratory pa. O, oh, limbawa lang. So, we have here presented, tapos yung, yung circle kanina, yung po yung ating, um, dun po nagkikita-kita ang mga sudyante, ano? Yan, so mas lumaki yung kanyang oval. Ah, school oval. So, ito po yung old version. Highlight natin ng medyo light lang. Uh, green. Ito po yung 1985. Tapos, ito naman po yung present. So, if you guys can see it clearly, you will be using time expressions, not just in statistical report, line graph, bar graph, pie chart, and table but you would also be using it in maps, okay? So you will be using after 20 years, two decades later, 20 years after, there were significant changes observed in reading university. The main campus became larger and has erected Two wings on its side. The gymnasium is now converted into a basketball and swimming court with a changing room near the swimming pool. 
However, the cafeteria, o ganun siya, after 20 years, so gagamit ka ng time expressions. So not only you will use time expressions in your line graph, bar graph, pie chart, and table, you will use it even in diagrams, in maps, and in any other indicated tasks. So make good use of your available time expressions for this regard. So up verbs. Examiners will also be fed up with how common they see the word increase, with how often they will see the word decrease. So the goal of writing in vocabulary is to avoid using the basic common words in your statistical reports. So naturally, because I am your coach, I already have, um, I listed down the following words that you can use for your advantage here. Soar is a verb they want you to use in replacement for the word increase. Now, there is an indication, no? however, we only use the word soar if you mean that the increase is to a high level in a very short time. So, sir, can you use it in a sentence? Okay, sure. This is how it will go. Huh? So, instead of writing, the population, population of Kabanatuan City increased um to 50% after 3 years example lang ito yeah the population of kabanatuan city increased to 50% after 3 years so this is just one sample so instead of using the word increased since this increase is from let's say 17% to 50% Definitely from 17, it took a very huge jump to become 50. Tama ba? Malaki yun. And we're talking about a population of a specific city. So we will replace sore now with, uh, we will replace increase to sore. Soared to 50% after three years. So malimit din kasing ginagamit yung... Uh, increase rapidly, increase drastically, okay? So instead of using uh, adverbs in this case, since the word soar and rocket mean very strong words already, we will not qualify them with the use of any adverbs now. Understood? Malinaw po. Naintindihan? Pag pinagawa ko sa inyo, magagawa? Okay. Ay, umaasa ko, ano? Okay. So, once again, if you encounter a line graph and the increase is like this, so this is the beginning, this is the rate, it decreased, it increased, it fell, so this will be what we call soar. Or if you don't want to use soar, we can use the word rocket. And if the increase is really, really, boink, boink, boom, 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 we will call this now skyrocket. It's very high. Muntik na maabot yung ceiling ng line graph. So skyrocket as a verb will be skyrocketed if it's in the past form. Example? Oh, the... Uh, enrollees of Herring University skyrocketed to 1,100 from its initial 100 students 10 years ago. Diba? Sandaan lang yung kanyang sudyante 10 years ago, tapos biglang 1,100 na. 
Yun yung pinakamataas. So skyrocketed. Pwede ko nang gamitin dyan. In this case. Okay? Rocket is more sudden. Mas biglaan siya. Leap shows a large and sudden rise. Again, you probably do not need to qualify it with an adverb. The price is left to 90% in one year. So for example, ang leap natin, bigyan ko to ng mga comparison, if this increases from 10 to 90%, tingnan nyo mabuti ha, gagamitin ko po si soar or si rocket. Malinaw? Okay. Pag ang increase po natin ay uh, from, let's say, 70 na, to begin with, nag-increase siya to 90, dun ko pwedeng gamitin si climb. Because si climb ay medyo neutral yung kanyang uh, term ng pag-akyat. Ngayon, kung ito ay from 50 to 90, about half yung kanyang itinaas, then that is where I can use the word leap in this case. So you also need to consider vocabulary. Especially you guys, you need to get seven in your writing passport. So those are just some of the words we can use to replace it. So bakit gusto ko ng variations? Kasi ganito guys yung idea, no? Sa isang writing task 1, hindi ka makakakita dyan ng isang line graph lang. Ang makikita nyo po dyan, kung halimbawa ito ang task mo, academic ha? Once again, general training, indicated din po ito sa inyo dahil kailangan nyo rin po gamitin yan sa task 2. The population increased rapidly, globally, the population soared, kagamit ka rin ng ganyan. So, halimbawa, ito yung electricity consumption in India during the year 1993. Ito yung kanyang line. Ito naman yung electricity consumption ng Philippines during the uh, year 1983 to 2020. Okay? Ito naman yung electricity consumption ng South Korea. Ito naman yung electricity consumption ng US. Oh, na nakita, apat. So, you will be using SOAR here. You will be using a skyrocketed here. You will be using peak here. And dito sa pula, pwede mong gamitin itong skyrocketed. Diba? Because this is the highest point. So most definitely, there should be variations because there are so many instances well, that you will need these words. Maraming pagkakataon na, na kailangan mo siyang gamitan nun. Kaya kailangan niya ng variations. Okay? So once again, si climb medyo neutral. The population climbed to over 1 million by 1980. Let's say from 580,000 to begin with, it increased to 1 million, then it increased to 2 million, so meron siyang trend the increasing. So yung climb from 500 to 1 million, climb. Yung 1 million to 2 million, leap. Yung 2 million to 8 million, soar. Okay. So gusto ko lang magkaroon kayo ng idea. Surge! Means to rise suddenly. So may mga blips. No? If you're going to imagine uh, an ECG reading, so pag may biglang mga pagtaas na ganun, mga blips ang tawag natin dyan. Hindi po brip, ano, sinusuot yun. So surge po ang word na ginagamit natin. So a surge in migration is seen in November with about 40% more inhabitants than last month. Yeah. So sir, Kanina, nagpakita ka ng electricity consumption in the US and it began at a very high uh, point downwards. So, naturally, I would not be finding any good use with my upverbs anymore. Correct? Wala na natin nakikinig sa akin. I will not be using, I will not be finding good use with my upverbs anymore. Correct? Okay. Why? Well, it's because the trend now is falling. So definitely, you will not be making good use of your upwards. Ano words na ang gagamitin mo? Puro pababa. So first is slip back. And ano po si slip back? Sir, can you tell me what slip back is? Ano ba tagalog ng slip? Nadulas. Tama ba? Yun. Okay. Nadulas. So pag nadulas, di ba pumabagsak? Okay. Now we need to use slip back as a phrase with precaution. Anong precaution natin kay slip back? Kasi si slip back meron siyang return. 
Okay. It returned to its original figure. So let's say, for example, I have here um, drawing ako ulit. Iba kasi hindi natututo hanggang walang drawing eh. No? Iba kasi pang kinder lang yung attention span eh. Kaya kailangan may kulay-kulay. So let's say I have here um, January, uh, Feb, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Ito po yung ating um, example. And then we have here Pagkokrosin lang natin yan. So, let's say for example, the electricity consumption began at 30. Then, during the year, uh, during the month of February, from 30, it increased to 50. And then, after a month, it returned to 30. Okay pa, Nak nakikita siya. Tapos na steady na increase niya hanggang November. Then by December, yung kanyang lowest, nasa 10. Example lang po ito ng ating graph. So this is exactly what I want to warn you about using the word slip back. If the figure returns to its original, or if the figure returns to the previous um number or previous ratio or previous percentage, then you can use the word slip back. Once again, if this is in the past, 1980, 2003, even 2023, that is already in the past. So you have to use the past form of the verb slip, which now becomes slipped. So, paano ko siya gagawin as a report? Okay. Electricity. Consumption in the Philippines for the year 2005 began at 30%. This is my first sentence. Okay? Electricity consumption in the Philippines for the year 2005 began at 30%. During the month of January. After a month, diba? the figure climbed, kasi nga, ito ay relatively neutral, climbed to 50%. By March, Slipped back to 30% before following a continuous continuously increasing pattern with a peak of 60% Electricity use by November. However, it, ano gagamitin nating bagsak? It plummeted to only 10% during the last month of 2005. So this will be your first paragraph. Kasi yung sa dilaw pa lang yung ginawan mo ng um, explanation, ng report. E usually kasi ang statistical report, hindi lang isang line na makikita mo. Tatlo, apat na makikita mo. Pinakamarami na natin nakita anim. 
No? So that is how you make a report with the variation of words using the word slip, um, climbed, plummeted. So you need to make good use of those physical words, statistical phrases. Sir, gusto ko pa pong matuto dyan. Again, ipopost ko po yung line graph. This will be the first statistical report replay topic that I will post next week. So halimbawa, ito yung sa Philippines. So meron din halimbawa South Korea naman. Yeah. Nag-start siya ng 20. Magsak siya ng 10. Bawa lang. Ano? Start siya ng 20. Bumagsak siya ng 10. Tapos umakit siya ng 30. Mumba siya ng 20. Umakit na naman siya ng 40. So parang ladder ang kanyang increase. Tapos ang pinakamataas naman niya ay 60. Noong December. So pwedeng ganyan naman si Korea. Tapos si India naman nagsimula siya sa 70. Yan, sa pang example, start siya ng, ng 70, bumaba sa 60 ng March, tapos tuloy-tuloy yung pagbagsak siya ng April, tapos steady lang siya hanggang November, tapos umakyat lang siya hanggang 20 noong December. So, ganun po naman siya. Nagigets yan? So, you have to describe these lines individually. So, if you see up verbs, sorry, if you see uh, inclines in your pattern, then you have to make good use of your up verbs, the one I showed kanina. Yan, ito po siya, sir, yung na mismo. Once again, may replay naman to, pwede mo pa ng oren. At ito pong mga content na ito ay ko-convert din natin sa PDF. And then, para naman sa pagbaba, slip back, drop and dip. Drop and dip are normally used for fairly small increases. Ah, sorry, fairly small decreases. So if we're going to make comparisons, si climb, uh, tataas lang siya ng mga 10 to 15 percent. Si dip, tataas, ababa din siya ng mga 10 to 15 percent. Ganun lang yung kanyang um, movement. Na? General movement. Now, obviously, we need to make good use of your uh, strong words. Lamet is the strongest word here. It means to fall very quickly at a long way. So, example natin kanina sa India from 70 down to 10, pinakamababa yan. The number of tourists to the city plummets after September. Plunge and plummet is only used when there is an extreme fall. The number of students plunge from 1,400 to 150. That is a nine times decline. Hence, I use the make I use the word plunge here. So, plummet, plunge para sa malalaking pagbagsak. Si dip and drop para naman sa piliit lang na pagbaba. At si slip back ay para sa mga tanga. Ano ba si tanga? Bumabalik pa, niloko na. So yun po si slip back. Okay? Niloko ka na, babalik ka pa. Ikaw pa magsusuhuri. Sorry kasi niloko mo. Alright? Okay. Feature forms. So we also encounter feature forms. Not just in physical reports, but also in maps. Okay, I'm very the problem is, not many people know how to use the feature form in its proper way. Gumagamit sa nalang, will probably, will likely, ano ba si will probably, will likely? Hindi ka sure. They're not so sure, this does not reflect a statistical composition. So, eh, malalim. Should, ano ba si should? Suggestion. Like you should not smoke. Hey, you should study more. You should sleep earlier. Give me a suggestion. Whether you do it or not, it will not hurt. The should I suggestion that recommendation. Ang mas malakas should si must. Dahil si must yun ay pero karampatan para sa pagdili ka si good. Now ala sa hospital na ka sabi mo sa pantay. Ah, you must not smoke here because we have oxygen tanks here. Sa abut tayo lahat pag nagdi osika. So, must. Like, pag may ginawa kang hindi tama, pero kapatos. So, how ay kong gumamit ng mga products sa ating future forms? Slightly too, hindi ka na naman siya. Ano po ba ang phrase na ginagamit natin sa future? Magbigay na naman ako ng drawing. So, example natin, dalawa. Isa pong... Um, Statistical report, isang static. 
Halimbawa, ito ay population in Australia. So, population in Australia. So, we have here, wait. Um, yan siya. So, baba siya ng konti. Basta taas siya. So, ito yung time niya. Halimbawa lang. 1950 tapos 2000 setong dulo 2050 so, Siyempre yung 2050 hindi pa nangyayari yan ba diba? Hindi pa so hindi ka pwedeng will kasi pag will sure ka eh eh prediction lang to Okay O sa mapa naman dumako naman tayo sa map Nalagay dito plan um Kevin's house plan. Hindi pa 'to nagagawa na. So future. Halimbawa na lang, wag nang wag nang bahay ko. Um renovations for university um gym nation. So meron ka diyan present dito na map. Drawing ako ng bilog. Baba, ito siya. Tapos meron ka nakalagay dito na suggestion sa baba. Ito yung mga gusto mangyari. Or mga amendments, mga gustong baguhin. So, ito na siya. So, mapansin nyo, if you're going to look at the map exactly, meron siya mga minor changes. May mga major changes. Unang-una, yung size. So, munod natin yung mga placement. May tinibag, may pinalitan, may dinagdagan. So, parehas kung hindi pa yan nangyayari. So, hindi po pwede yung mga is likely, will, hindi pwede yan. So, sa isang statistical report, ano pong mga words ang dapat? Ito siya. Na? Ito pong mga to. Sulat ko, yung buong phrase. Hmm. It is expected that by the year 2050 Australia's population would reach 1.2 billion Hmm. Sir, eh, gagamitin daw po ni Ma'am Giselle yung expected. Ano pa kaya pwede? Predicted. It is predicted that by the year 2050, Australia's population would reach 1.2 billion. Gusto mong i-convert yung sentence um, into passive voice. Pwede ring, um Australia's population would reach 1.2 billion or Australia's population is anticipated to reach 1.2 billion by the year 2050. Okay, so forecasted, estimated, predicted, expected. Paano naman yung sa mapa natin kanina? ba? Diba? After renovation, um, the universities Gymnasium is expected to expand its dressing room by 4.5 square meters buwing ko nga more. Pwede mo idagdagan pa. More than its present um, size. Hmm. Expected that by the year 2050, Australia's population would reach 1.2 billion. Australia's population 
is expected to reach 1.2 billion by the year 2000. This is another way of putting it into writing. Expected, pahilta natin, forecasted naman. Yan. Ay, 2050 pala. Yan. Ayan po, ano? Nouns plus preposition. So you have to make good use of your preposition. Ito na po, nakalista na sila. Verbs. Difference ng noun versus verb. Mga clue word natin dyan, for example, si increase. Bawa lang po, magigay ang example. Okay. So pareho po siyang increase. But because... Iba yung ginamit mong preposition sa isa. Ito po ay noun. At ito naman po ay verb. Simple lang. Yan lang mga pangatanda. So dahil ito po ay noun, hindi po yan pwede magkaroon ng mga D, E, D. Tama? Alright. Bawal kang gumamit ng mga tenses. Bawal gumamit ng S sa increase. Bawal gumamit ng ES. Bawal gumamit ng D. Bawal gumamit ng ED. Bawal yan lahat. Kasi noun siya eh. Ngayon, pag ginamit mo naman yung increase na verb, to. Pwede ka maglagay ng D dyan, increased to, increasing to, increases to. So, pag off noun, bawal yung S, E, S, D, E, D. Siya lang yan as is. Pag naman verb siya, increase to plus the verb. Anong pinakaiba ng increase to sa increase by? Sir, nasa likod. Anong pangalan mo? Raymond, anong pinagaya ba ng uh, increase to sa increase ba? Okay. Pagkakay na ng sample. Para hindi ka masyado mahirapan. Um, 1980, 25 million. 1990, Pagkagi siyang 30 million. Paano ko gagamitin dito yung increase to saka increase by? Okay. Correct. Pag sinabi mong increase to, you are going to put the new figure in comparison to the previous one. Nasa ang figure ka na. Kanina nasa 25, ngayon 30. So ano yung increase to ko? To 30. Tama? So 30 million. Increase to 30 million. Pag increase by, may di ito. Sorry, nakalimutan ko ilagay. Pag Sa subtractin mo yung 25 and 30, magiging siya ang increase by 5 million. So magkaiba din siya. At parang may konting variations sa inyong presentation. Hindi lang increase to, 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 pra, uh, leap to, climb to. Para meron din silang comparison. So napaka-helpful din ng paggamit ng buy. So shuffle-shuffle yun siya. Magpapay ka, to, 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 to. Okay? Sir, wala pagbabago eh. Tulad na to, no? yung kaninang sample nating electricity consumption in India, um, nag-start po siya ng 70, tapos nag-plateau siya ng hanggang November, tapos nagkaroon lang siya ng konting increase ng December. Yan po yung pinaka-trend dyan. So, paano ko sir i-describe itong anomalyang ito? No? Yan. Ang tawag po natin dyan, so for, for example, ito ay tumama ng April hanggang November, di ba? During the month um, of putting from the month, from the month of April until November, 
there were no significant changes noted as regards to electricity consumption in India. Alagyan mo pa ng figure. Ay! Sayang. Which remained at constant at let's say 14%. From the months of April until November, there were no significant changes though to this regards to electricity consumption in India, which remained constant at 14%. Diba? Ang sarap basahin pag ganyan. Hmm. Kesa yung uh, from April to November is only 14. <laughs> There's no statistical point of view. So, reach a peak. Naabot yung pinakamataas. Reach a plateau. Yan naman po yung pinakamalalim, pinakamababa. Plateau. Time expressions. Ayan siya, mga sample. Process. So, in processes, we have two types. Meron tayong tinatawag na Process illustration that show how something works or how something is created. Like mga manufacture ng, ng kape, manufacture ng toyo, yan. Meron po tayong tinatawag na closed cycles. So magkaiba po yan. Si process illustration, meron siyang numbers. Like one, it is step one. Let's say mixing ingredients. Tapos step two, drying the output. Tapos ang drying, a processing of the mix. Tapos sa four naman, packaging of the goods. Tapos sa five, delivery to the consumers. Yan. So, nagamit ka ng, in the first stage of the process, mixing the ingredients including nuts, raisins, and grains are done by combining them in a large pot. With the temperature applied at around 230 degrees Fahrenheit. After this, they are dried completely and left in the same pot for two to three days with the heat of only 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, processing of the mix, including adding natural preservatives and coloring, is done after this and packaging of the goods comes right after with the help of a machine at the end of the factory. In the end, a truck collects the processed goods to be delivered to the consumers and other buyers such as supermarkets and stores. Oh. So, gagamit ka ng the first stage is when. The first stage is the process begins at. The process commences at. O, diba? So you are indicating exactly na ito po ang simula ng proseso. Clear? Okay. Now, what happens if we don't have steps? At ito po ay bilog lang na cycle. Bawa, uh, ito yung water cycle. Natatanong po yan, ha? Huwag kayong ano dyan. So, dito muna si evaporation. Parang ano yan, eh, mga halo-halo. May evap ka, may condense ka dyan. Hmm. Tapos ito naman ay precip. Tama ho ba? So, nag-evaporate yung water. Akyat siya as clouds. Condense. Tapos precipitation either as rain or snow. Lalapit yan sa mga mountainous areas. 
So, halimbawa, water cycle, saka magsisimula sa condensation, sa precipitation, o sa evaporation. Wala magkakasundo kung ano nauna dyan. Parang pagtatalo, ano ba nauna? Itlog o manok. May scientific explanation na nauna yung manok. May scientific explanation na nauna yung eggs. Diba? It's a never-ending discussion. But the thing is, um, if you encounter a similar setup like this, you can begin wherever you want to begin in the most logical beginning point. So in, in my case, hindi yan magkisimula sa condensation. Because condensation happens prior to uh, precipitation or before evaporation. So I can either begin with precipitation, which makes us, which makes sense because that's where you get the water source from, or you can start with evaporation where the water is already con conserved in one area before it becomes cloud. Diba? Um, yun nga lang, bawal kang gumamit ng mga words tulad ng first. Bawal na ba? X yan. Na? Bawal pong gamit ng the first stage is when. Yan po ang bawal sa. So determine mo muna. Is the process numbered from beginning to end? Is there a step followed from sequences from the first step to the last step? Kung meron siyang ganun, then you're allowed to use the first the process begins, the process commences, you can use it like that. But if this is not, you saw a circle, minsan hindi lang po circle, random yung shape. Mayroon tayo dyan, life cycle of a frog. May na-encounter tayo nyan. Um, Life cycle of a moth. Tapos sa baba, may process ka. How to make uh, silk from the moth. The harvested few phase of the moth, di ba? So may mga na-encounter na So if next week will be line graph, the week after that will be process. So, ito po, yung after ng isa. Anong paborito kong combo dito? So alimbawa, ano? The process of making silk out from the moth's cocoons begins with harvesting the cocoons. So, tapos ka na doon. Lagay mo na to. Ito yung paborito ko. Once this stage is complete, it is then followed by um Threading, I know, by putting them in a pot of boiling water. The first stage of making silk out from moth's cocoon is harvesting the pupas. Period. Once this stage is complete, it is then followed by putting them in a pot of boiling water. Instead of, next is boiling water. But once this stage is complete, it is then followed by. So, nagamit ko na yun, sir. Gamit ka naman ng afterwards. In the following step. After this. Okay, so napaka-helpful po ng mga words na yan. So, academic, once again, dito magsisimula ang ating... Um, process writing after two weeks, mapapanood nyo na ito. Gagawa na kayo. Huwag na huwag pong iwawala yung handout na to. Kung pwede nyo siyang i-download sa mga devices nyo, ipaprint para meron kang copy. Pag gumagawa ka na ng process, may mga kokopyahan ka na ng mga words. Ha? Okay. Once again, kung meron kang last step, pwede, pwede mo itong gamitin. But if you don't have one because ang iyong uh, process ay close, so, wag pong gagamit na to. Okay po? So, maps. So, you have to make good use of your directions. Situated at, located on, sighted at, positioned around, above, below, inside, next to, right off, north off, connected to, in the middle, in the center, on the side, along the, marami pa at the center, along, off, across, opposite, close to, adjacent, katabi, next to, katabi, beside, katabi, surrounding, napapalibutan. At the rear, sa likod, at the front, sa harap, beside, behind, next to, nearby, beyond. 
but beyond nasa dulo. The useful vocabulary is for describing maps. So you have to determine sections of the maps, but also um, infrastructure in the map. Like may nakita ka doon, legend, nakalagay mga maliliit na bahay, tapos nakalagay residential area. So gagamit ka ng word na residential area, houses, housing. Pag yun naman ay industrial area, pwede mong sabihin na an, industry, an area that has a lot of factories. Commercial area, woodland, woods, forest, forested area, intersection. Ang intersection po, yan po yung crossing. Ang Filipino term kasi crossing, pero ang English term ay intersection o cross street. Ang cross street po ay hyphenated. Proximity, closeness. So kung ang map mo ay plano para sa pag-itatayo nilang supermarket, let's say tapos pinamimili ka ano yung uh, best choice. So meron ako dito halimbawa supermarket A. Ito yung mapa ko, rectangle. Ito yung supermarket B. May mga houses dyan. May industrial area dito. Nandito yung ating uh, kalsada kapunta sa isa pang city with 25,000 population. Meron ditong tren na dadaan. Uh, etong supermarket B naman. Sorry. Ito muna si A. Yeah. And si A. Ito si B. Sa supermarket A, malapit naman siya sa kalsada papuntang Hindun na may 10,000 population. So, masasabi natin na sa dulo ng iyong composition na supermarket B is the preferred site for the building because of its proximity to houses, industrial area, and public transportation going to Cranston with a population of 20,000 people as compared to um, option A, which don't have any uh, areas close to it. So may mga pagbabago sa map. So change, pwede mong gamitin yung word na change into modify, construct, Originally, sa unang map, wala siya doon. Pero doon sa bagong map, may itinayo dito sa area na to. Yan. So, to build naman siya. Relocate to move a structure or facility to a different location. Demolish to destroy a building or another structure completely. So, yun naman po yung kabaliktaran ni Construct. So, kung originally, meron siya dito. Tapos sa, sa renovation natin, eh, wala na siya doon. Yun naman po ay demolish. So, meron ditong school. Tapos, ginawa na pong hotel ang school. Yan. So, yun naman ay replace. So, yung kaninang example natin, yung university main campus, nagdagdag siya ng dalawang wing. So, yun naman po ay expand. Nag-expand siya. So, transition words. So, this is how you can use the transition words, however, compared to, in contrast, and in comparison properly. Once again, this is not only indicated for academic because for general training, um, you both need to use your contrasting signals in your discourse marker. So the Middle East produces high levels of oil, however. So take a look at how this word, however, is being used here. There's a semicolon before it, and there's a comma after. So this is how to properly use the word however. Once again, this is how to properly use the word however. If it is inside the sentence, there should be a semicolon and a comma after. The problem is not many people know how to use semicolons. So my suggestion is we're going to use however. Put a period here. Begin with a capital letter H that indicates the beginning of a word in a new sentence. Yun po ang mas okay sa atin. So compared to, this should be within the sentence, whereas in contrast and in comparison has equal relevance. However, ang tawag natin sa kanila ay subordinating conjunction. So pwede po siyang gamitin to begin your sentences. So the most popular form of holiday among the Welsh was self-catering with over 60% choosing to cook themselves. In contrast, only 5% of the English choose this form of vacation and hotel accommodation was much more popular at 48%. Almost 50% of the English cousin northern countries chose to stay in a hotel for their holiday. In comparison.
Kazan, staying in South catering accommodation was much less popular percent of people choosing this. So yun po yung isang sample na. Subordinating conjunctions, once again, the key of using were as and while is to put them in the middle of the sentence so as not to commit a grammatical mistake. Because the idea here is many people forget the Tawag dito is hindi nila na ilalagay yung independent clause. Sabi ng nila, while the Middle East produces high levels of oil, tutuldok na sila doon. So, for you to avoid this, remember to put either the word whereas or while in the middle, like the first one above. The Middle East produces high levels of oil, whereas Japan produces none. Or equally relevant for while lang gamitin mo sure. Although the Middle East produces 100 times of oil, Japan produced them. Same goes. So, showing similarities. Halimbawa, sa table, yung isa 20.3%, tapos 20.3% din siya. So, sabihin mo lang, the percentages of females and males who studied languages at university were very similar. The figures were 23.2% for each. A similar amount of gas and electricity at around 20% apiece was used in homes. The percentage of females who studied at university in 2011 um, was 13%, which was almost exactly the same as in 2012 with 12.95%. Kaya almost exactly the same kasi may 0.5% silang difference. So, ang ginagamit kasi ng iba, tied up. Sabi, they are tied up. Na-imagine nyo ba ano ibig ng tied up? Diba, tied up? Tinali. Ba't ito tinali? Diba? It doesn't seem right. So instead of using tied up, you say almost exactly the same, a similar amount of, and very similar. You should use them instead. Okay? Clear? Alright. So the time on my watch is 10.53. Mag-aalas on sina. We will be taking a very short break before po natin na uh, i-continue ang ating discussion. So I'll be pausing this meeting for a while. Ingat tayo. Respectively means in this order. So for men, the proportion of treatment admissions rose from 1.8 in 1998 to 8.1% in 2008. For women, those figures were 3.5 and 13.3. Without even saying 1998 and 2008 anymore, that means exactly the same thing. So let me give you another example. Kevin and Nico aren't my just my friends so speaking ito ha they are my or oh, the former is my cousin while the latter is my uncle which means that kevin this was the first one mentioned. So Kevin is your cousin. Latter, this is the second mentioned. So Nico is your uncle. Now, if, if it becomes three, well then, Kevin, Nico, and Dan aren't just my friends. They are my cousin, uncle, and brother, respectively. Remember, you put respectively in the end and respectively needs a comma before the, the word. It means in this particular order, Kevin cousin, Nico uncle, Dan brother. Kuha? Okay, that's how you use respectively. So in a statistical standpoint, ito naman siya. For men, the proportion is 1.89 to 98, 8.1 in 2008. For women, this is 3.5 and 13.3 respectively, which means 3.5 for 1998, 13.3 for 2008. So allocate, ginagamit natin ito sa budget, allocate budget, allotted a budget, um, spent, allotted, splurged, expenditure of, si comprise, and si compose. Nag-iibang ibig sabihin niyan, si comprise, we're going to mention the ingredients first, so the specific details first. So women and children comprise, 
But in the case of compost, you mentioned the endpoint or the general idea. Concrete is composed of cement, sand, and water, gravel mixed with water. So, sir, uh, masyado na po ang kailangan tandaan sa buhay. Natandaan ko pa po yung anniversary namin ng misis ko, mga birthday ng anak ko, birthday ng kapatid ko, ng bayaw ko, ng bilas ko, ng lahat. So, hindi ko na po matatandaan kung sino yung comprise, sino yung compost. Kaya naman, kung nalilito ka, tandaan mo lang si consist. Dahil si consist, pwedeng mauna yung main idea, pwedeng mauna yung main idea. Okay? Writing the conclusion. Okay. So, writing in vocabulary in task to tayo. So, if you're making general statements, you can use the word generally. Generally, many people find convenience in using internet for their research. In most cases, a lot of individuals today prefer ordering food online rather than preparing meals. By and large, um, commuters would prefer a much more convenient way of going to their places of um, leisure. So sequencing the first idea, the most important consideration of um, respect towards the elderly is Huwag pong gagamit ng mga first of all, first is, secondly, thirdly. Ayaw po ng mga examiner na parang binibilangan daw sila. No? Pwede yung another, furthermore, moreover, tinuturo ka if you're adding supporting ideas. This could be done within the paragraph or if you want to begin an entire paragraph with an additional supporting idea, then this will help your case. Unfortunately, I did the discussion for agree, disagree, and discuss both views uh, during the previous weeks. But this Saturday, the one that I will discuss is the open-ended type. So we will not be making good use of further, more, and moreover if you're going to begin a paragraph here. This will be helpful lang kapag nasa gitna siya ng para. Which, of course, I am giving you a spoiler but my suggestion is to attend it na sa mga gusto pong matuto ng writing, kumatend po kayo this coming Saturday. So if you're putting contrast and the contrasting idea will begin in another sentence or in another paragraph, ito yung mga pwede. Yan. Ito po. Yung mga words na but, yet, rather than. Bawa. Many people would stay at home rather than talk to their neighbors due to their hectic schedule. So, dun mo ginagamit si rather than para po sa loob ng sentence. Instead. So, instead of chit-chatting with neighbors, people would prefer staying inside their houses to rest instead. Okay. Okay. So, if you have three paragraphs and your essay instruction is about um, argumentative ideas, and each of your body paragraph will have samples, the sample phrases must be varied. So, for example, this is one way of introducing it. For instance, another in particular, this is one way to put it. A clear example of this is a clear example of this is sure. That's okay because longer your word, no? Um, so, sa paggawa po ng idea, halimbawa lang ha, gagawa tayo ng idea. Isang paragraph to, body. Halimbawa lang. A uh, computer being advantageous in one's study. Diba? Oh, there are many reasons why a lot of individuals today prefer using the internet rather than, oh, diba yung ginamit yung rather than? Or instead of to the library 
There are many reasons. Kineclaim mo lang. Sinultukan mo. The most important consideration is the convenience this technology offers. So, yun po yung aking uh, supplementing sentence. A clear example of this is the accessibility of information regardless of time and location. Bigyan mo ng justice. Ano tong ibig sabihin mo sa time? Diba? Libraries usually close after office hours. But um, websites run 24-7. Making uh, useful data available to anyone everywhere. Damn. Ang idea lang dyan, internet. Advantage. Pero humaba siya dahil sa paggamit mo ng mga terms na natutunan mo dito sa klase nating vocab for IELTS. Yeah. Bigay ka ng idea, bigay ka ng supplementing idea, bigay ka ng example, and explain mo siya thoroughly. So, hindi siya mahirap. Bakit siya dumali? Because alam mo na itong mga puzzle pieces na to, pag dudugtong-dugtongin mo na lang sila. Okay po? Naku ha? Hmm. So, I hope na sana after ng ating writing major this coming Saturday, if hindi pa ganun ka polished ang writing skills ng ilan, sana ay mas maging improved na ang kanilang skills. Ano? O pwede rin, there are different reasons why people prefer using internet over traditional method of accessing information. This is due to the convenience websites offer to the users. In particular, internet the information from the internet are available 24/7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pwede mo ring habaan lang like that. Kapag nagbibigay ka ng argument mo, from my perspective, from my point of view, in my opinion, saan ito useful? Pag-introduction. At pag ang introduction mo, they belong in the category of opinion type. Tatlo po yan. Kung ito po ay uh, agree-disagree, ito po ay to what extent, ito po ay advantage versus disadvantage, Napaka-useful po niyan. Malino po tayo? Clear? Okay. Pero kung discuss both views at open-ended yung gagawin natin di Saturday, hindi po yan kailangan. So indicated lang po ito dun sa tatlo. Some people believe that internet provides useful information rather than accessing books in a library. From the point of view of the public, they feel more comfortable learning online rather than going to school. It is sometimes argued that the internet is a better hub of information than libraries. So ang dami nating way to make concessions and to indicate other people's opinion through the use of your words. To give advantages, a major advantage of using internet is... Another important of another important merit of public school is another benefit of public transportation is, however, a major drawback of public transportation is one disadvantage of 
public education is one limitation is that education as a result, as a consequence, every a result neutral, a consequence negative. No? So if people would not be careful with how they manage their solid waste, the ecology would suffer as a result. So, At the path to choose one option over the other. Halimbawa, anong topic natin kanina? Halimbawa, bigyan tayo ba ito? Um, some people say that going to university after graduation is the best thing to do. Whereas others state that taking a year off is more beneficial. Do you agree or disagree? We cannot encompass the assertion that taking one year break after high school seems to offer strong arguments against enrolling to a college right after graduation. The beginning on ang pananaw na magpahinga muna ng isang taon ng mga sadyante after nilang graduate ay nagbibigay ng uh, mas positibong argumento laban dun sa kabila. Ayun siya. So, ang gagawin nyo na lang po, itatandaan nyo na lang po yung mga yan. Hindi nyo na kailangan mag-isip pa. Ayun, no? I-identify nyo na lang. So, paano nagbibigay ka ng concession sa umpisa? Many people are convinced that Public transportation and we can say public transportation efficiency is the best way to solve traffic problems in many metropolitan areas around the world. In my opinion, I find myself in accord with this notion. introduction. So I hope na after the class in the marami ka yung ma-improve dun sa inyong word. And sentence constructions, ha? Okay. So, mga advantages, meron tayong synonyms. Um, month of February natin itatakil ang advantage versus disadvantage. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So, synonyms for causes. Issues behind, the issues responsible for. Factors resulted to. Yeah. Factors which have led to. Possible then. Uh, consequences, effects, impacts, the issues has resulted in, which have resulted from, para naman po ito sa effects. So, ang dami-dami mong sentences na pwedeng pagamitan. Alimbawa, the problems that came from deforestation is likely to result in Climate change. Diba? Pwede mo siyang ilagay ila 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 like that. Oh. Other cause verbs. So we have cause that means negative. The storm caused chaos, havoc, a lot of damage. Her remarks caused alarm, concern. His friend's behavior caused him great anxiety and embarrassment. Huwag kong gagamitin yung word na cause para sa mabuti, ha? Eh, ay mga jowa, yung mga pagsinabi, it caused me a lot of happiness. Bakit iwalay ka na agad? Dahil hindi na kayo gamitin yung cause ng tao. So, ba, maging anak niya, mali-mali ito tulong niya? O. Oh. Siyempre, gusto mo sa ibang bansa kayo titira. Tapos, yung paggamit ng cause, hindi tama. So, positive and negative naman si bring about. So, positive, the discovery of x-rays brought about a revolution, transformation in medical science. The events brought about the downfall, collapse of the government. So yung taas natin ay positive, yung baba naman ay negative. You can use it however you want. It. Create, it's either to present positive or negative situations. Pwede rin siya sa feeling. So the government campaign help create awareness about the issue. And your presence in the committee is creating problems for all. 
si spark of nag mitcha no the announcement spark of riots his wife's absence spark of moves to attract this is reaction attracted a lot of criticisms attracted support so produce naman results and effects meron pa si generate si generate most di ginagamit natin siya sa mga computer technological um, aspect no so generated income generated data do natin siya ginagamit so yun po yung tinatawag nating collocations any questions for the vocabulary in writing taxi any questions hopefully that oh. once again you can use it you can browse it Whenever you want to. Ano, kasi, once again, you cannot put everything in one go at once. Hindi naman din ganun kadali yan. Matandaan. Ang pinaka-importante talaga dyan, yung mga phrases na to. Ma-filter out mo. Ano yung useful sa'yo? Ano yung mas comfortable kang gamitin? So that when the time comes, nagagawa ka na ng writing at dumating na yung examination where you can use these uh, phrases comfortably. So speaking Discourse markers are important in speaking. Do you agree? Yeah. Discourse markers in speaking are important. Do you agree? Yes. Lalagay ko ba dyan niya kung importante? Diba? The question is, how can I make this first markers, the ones I will be using when speaking this work for my own benefit. The first thing you have to remember about these first markers in speaking is that they are not the same with the discourse markers we use in writing. Clear? If in the writing subtest we use the phrases and words like on the other hand. However, a clear example of this is, furthermore, you should refrain from using them. Can we say the answer? You want to go with something that's writing, then you bring me to this book. Yes. First, you have to separate what speaking is and writing for you to understand the nature of each vocabulary. Well, for starters, um, writing subtext book and formal in nature. So when you understand the context formal, you have to undergo a certain standard that follows the rules of a formal writing. Therefore, using a much more formal language in the continuity of your presentation of ideas would be much preferred. Sa Tagalog, sa Madaling Sabi, dahil formal po ang writing, kinakailangan mo din gumamit ng mga salitang formal. Tama po ba? So, pag ang mga kaibigan mo, nag-uusap-usap kayo sa, ba, sa kanilang sa mute, di ba? Hindi naman kayo nag-uusap na, Maari mo bang iabot sa akin ang pangkuha ng karne? Di ba? Hindi ka naman ganang pag-uusap, pwede ba? Like, uy, ano po yan? Yan lang lang eh. So, bawal po sa writing yung mga sudden words, mga common words, mga everyday terms. But in speaking, pwede? In speaking, at ini-encourage po namin yung less formality level pagdating sa speaking. So, yung order ng formality, writing, extreme. Speaking, it should be friendly in nature, but still respectful. Magalang. Pero, mas casual. Okay? Ah, tinanong, Kevin, what do you do during your free time? Ito po yung mali. Hindi ganito ang pagsagot sa speaking, ano? Once leisure, we enjoy it together with the variations. They use once available time frame for once enjoyment. 
some of these together with ones, family and friends, into itself. One is, hindi pa tayo gumagawa ng ganun ako. Hindi pa tayo gumagamit ng ganun sa speech. The friendlier the tone is, the more talkative you become, the more assertive your speech becomes. So sa speaking, medyo bali-bali ng konti, pero andun pa rin yung respectfulness and politeness. Since we need to remember, the examiner na yun, she will be using it. So, look at these words, thankfully. First of all, let us define what these first markers are and how can they be a big boost in your speaking score. Well, these first markers are phrases which you use to connect your speech more smoothly. If you don't use them, your speech doesn't flow properly and it is harder for the examiner to follow the piece. Area and speaking that in a power of nothing, para po dito sa river na flow. Smooth, smooth flow. And the apat yun. Fluency, vocal, grammar, pronunciation. Fluency! Para sa mga yun, FL, eh, ho? Flow, fluid, fluent, smoothness. So for the smoothness, from the transition of your idea to the other, you have to use these course markers. So this is one example. In an online examiner, Kevin, tell me about a time you went out with your friends. This is my example. The last time I went with your friends was last week. It was really a disaster. Sir, I know who was speaking. Because what did I last time? Sabi mo sa speaking, bawal pa mga negative. Bakit sabi mo yan? It was really a disaster. Well, wait, ka lang. Meron na kong plot twist yan sa dulo. Because we were supposed to watch a concert which got cancelled. Thankfully, we got a refund on our tickets, which we used to watch film of Aquaman 2 starting starring Jason Momoa, one of our favorite actors. The movie is so good and really had a lot of fun. Thankfully, put in enough. Okay. So Kevin, what do you like most about your job being a bus driver? You see, my company offers the chance to work in different places without me. Spending a single centavo. Naturally, I didn't want to miss such a wonderful opportunity. So, way back seven years ago, didn't think I would last very long in this because they gave me a chance to prove myself. That's why I'm very thankful for that. Kevin, do you like eating spicy food? One time I remember my brother cooked a very spicy dish. It was chicken biryani with lots of chili flakes. Generally, I don't like spicy food at all. I don't really, in, I'm not really into that. But on that occasion, I really enjoyed it because there were different hints of herbs in my mouth that I've only tried for the first time. Ever since then, I asked my brother to cook this chicken biryani for me, but I don't still find uh, interest in other types of spicy food besides this. Lahat spicy food, ayaw ako, pero dito kasi sarap ang water. There's a lot of spices and stuff. Kevin, when was the last time you went out for a walk? Just yesterday, I went out to stroll my son on a stroller started to rain heavily after about 30 minutes. Luckily, we'd remember to bring our umbrellas and the place where we got caught off by the rain is not very far from my house. So we're very lucky. Luckily. Hmm. So Kevin, when was the last time you were disappointed in something? So two months ago, we celebrated my parents' wedding anniversary in one of the local restaurants in the place where I live. It was newly built, and we kept on seeing posts on social media of how good this restaurant is. Well, when we get there, the restaurant looked lovely, but unfortunately, the service was done. We had to wait for 30 minutes for our food. And it doesn't even 
tastes good to begin with. And the price was exorbitant. We were charged way too high from what we were expecting. So, obviously, we didn't return to that customer. We decided to just go to other restaurants, which we are much more comfortable with. And tastes that we are familiar with. Kevin, do you think that your favorite subject, mathematics, is helpful to your current job today? You see, I didn't actually expect a lot of mathematics with my course nursing, but I think this is very useful. In fact, it is probably the most useful thing in my course to begin with. We need to measure heart rates, blood pressure monitoring, the difference between the white and red blood cells. So there were so many mathematics in nursing. But many people fail to see the importance. That's why I think it is very useful in my course. Expressing opinions. So you can use the phrase in my experience. In my view, personally, I feel I would say it depends. You can know. Kevin, would you buy a poor quality item endorsed by your favorite celebrity? I think it depends heavily on the type of item. For example, I'm a huge fan of Michael Jordan. And if he starts selling a cheap quality item, but I can use it as a memorabilia, like a flashlight or a lanyard, then I would consider buying it because it wouldn't hurt. But if he starts selling appliances that is powered by gas or electricity, and there are so many reviews that they are faulty, then I wouldn't consider because my safety would be compromised. So I think that it heavily depends on the type of product. But if, if I just want to buy memorabilia of the celebrity I'm looking to, looking up to, then I will buy it even though the quality is poor. Kevin, what is your opinion about the quality of commercials these days? Well, in my experience, commercials used to be direct to the point. Right now, advertisements, especially the ones shown on television and the internet, they're very creative. Something that makes you laugh at it and remember them just because of the fun you had. I once saw this advertisement from Grab. This is a local taxi-based healing application in the country. And there's this man with a mustache. And it has four images of him that gets to be zoomed after every image. So one image is just his bare face. The next image is his um, lower face. And then the lower left image is the mustache. And if you put the perspective on the lower right portion of the image, his mustache was actually trimmed with the advertisement. So I was like, you got me. Okay, I remember that because of how fun I had. In my experience, commercials used to be boring, but today they are much more fun. commercial. soft drinks na naging tao, eh, di ba? Weird. Ito yung commercial ng uh, Old Spice, ito yung ilang yan, di ba? Ito mga commercial sa Malaysia, saka Thailand, nakakaiba ng mga commercial nila. No? So, commercials used to be boring and upfront. Okay, our product exists. These are our advantages over the competitors. But right now, they evolved. Di ba? Here are some phrases you can use to talk about what people think generally. So, Kevin, in your country, why do you think people use celebrities to promote 
products in a commercial. Some people would agree with me that if someone is famous, this individual has more reach and there's a tendency for the product to have a wider reach as well. Ultimately, the goal of marketing is for the people, the masses, to know the product's existence and its advantages over the competitors. Into thinking then that when they go to a supermarket or to a shop nearby, they will remember the product, which will prompt them to buy it ultimately. So I think that they're doing a good job of endor using product endorsers, which are already famous to begin with, because by then, people would also copy what these celebrities are using. That's what I've heard that people say. I've heard that. Kevin, what is your opinion about um, community service of teenagers, unpaid community service for teenagers? Well, I've heard that community service, if done right, can give benefits, particularly in the behavior of the youth. And a lot of people think that if we are going to allow them to participate in community building strategies, they would be much more grounded and they will avoid their bad peers. So in my opinion, I think this is a great idea. In my opinion, in my experience, it's a matter of my When you want to say something that made an impression on you, had that effect on me, affected me, motivated me, moved me, impressed me, like your favorite song, favorite movie, your favorite TV show, your favorite book. You know. But the examiner is a future. Like what you want or what do you expect future to happen or what do you expect future to look like? How things will change in the future. Example. Do you think more people would buy more or less products in the future. I think there's nothing wrong with buying stuff that you need. But these days, people are not becoming very idealistic and uh, they just purchase whatever they want because of the sales that they can get as discounts. It is highly probable, though, that in the future, many individuals would have this critical mindset over thinking about the environment. Many companies are actually starting to do that. For example, Starbucks. They claim that they use their straw, which is made of paper and uh, recycled tissue papers to help the environment. So I think more people would be compelled so it's very likely that people in the future, more individuals would be more eco-friendly than what we have today due to their purchasing habits. Suggestion. So Kevin, what is your suggestion so that we can avoid being victims of fake news? Do you think it's more of a personal responsibility or more of a governmental policy. In my opinion, I think that the problem of fake news is a combination of both. So for people not to become victims of it, they should use the combination of the policies with the government, ensuring the safety of websites and applications, and also being vigilant with the links and posts that they come across. So for example, the scam emails claiming the credit card numbers that we had some problem with your credit card. We want you to click this link and confirm your identity. Banks don't do that. So people find it convenient to just click links and put their identity online, but my suggestion is it's better to be safe and to go to the bank instead because that's money we're talking about. That's why many people fall victim. So the suggestion here is we need more information dissemination from the government 
the government must have a policy to avoid such links from existing in the first place. And people themselves are responsible for their own safety in the online world. Okay. Sir, yes, the more positive you are, the better school you will have. No, it's called sir, but said the yes. Expressions of time. Can I tell you when examiner you when? When was the last time you went out for a walk? When was the last time you watched a movie with your, with your friends? Do you have any plans going to the mall in the near future? So late August, the beginning of the week, midweek, the first thing in the morning. Kevin, what's your what's your daily routine like? Well, my daily routine is very simple. First in the morning, and then lunch. Likes and dislikes. Kevin, what do you like to do during your free time? Is there an activity? Is there a household chore you don't like doing? Is it? Is there a commercial you don't like? Is there a TV program you don't like watching? Tell me about a film that you will not recommend to your friends. Tell me about a book that you really like reading. So likes and dislikes. That's why it is very important, especially in the speaking subtest, to be familiar with who you are. Sino nga ba ako? Ano bang books ang gusto ko? Ano bang books ayaw ko? Ano bang commercials ang napanood ko? Ano bang restaurant ang ayaw kong puntahan? Ano bang restaurant ang gusto kong kainan? For example, gusto kong kumain sa McDonald's because um, they have increased their chicken portions because people call them out. But the, a fast food restaurant that I don't like eating at these days is Chow King. The reason for it is because their rice became so greasy. In the past, it's like perfect um, fried rice that people can enjoy. But right now, I throw up because of how oil dense it is. I hate, I can't stand, I have no interest. Kevin, um, tell me about horror films. Do you like watching them? I can't stand watching horror films. Because I underwent therapy when I was young because of one horror film I saw when I was a kid. The title was Nightmare on Street. So the plot of this movie was there's a person, there's a ghost, an entity that wants children's nightmare and it feeds to the fear of children. So when I saw it, I didn't sleep for three days. I underwent sleep therapy because I was afraid of sleeping, thinking that this... Um, monster will come after me when I sleep in my dreams. That's why I don't like watching horror films ever since then. And I haven't seen one until today. I don't plan on seeing one ever. So I really like watching horror films. It makes my heart race, especially the suspense. So sometimes I scream and when, when my companions, my friends and family, they scream as well. It, it becomes fun. So this fear is converted into having fun with one another because we can share extreme emotions with one another. So more locations. All right. So that is basically our uh, vocabulary for IELTS. So once again, question po ng ating participant kanina. Yes, we will be posting the replay the link will be on our Facebook group and Discord server. Unfortunately, I will not be cross-posting the link on the community chat anymore. We will be using the community chat only for the purpose of asking for schedule, question and answer, etc. regarding schedule. And uh, the reason for it, because Google Drive files are not um, safe to be posted on community chat. Kasi baka maban na yung Facebook po pagka isa pang strike sa Facebook. Pag nakatatlo kasi eh, GG eh, di ba? So nakaka two times na ako. Kaya ayoko naman mawala yung Facebook. Alright? Sabi ni Mari Chris, okay lang pa i-print yung mga questions? Yes, pwedeng pwede po. Yung, yung sample essay, Mari Chris. Then gagawa ko ng sample ng essay. Mari Chris, pumasok ka muna ng Sabado. No? Pumasok ka muna ng Sabado, Mari Chris bago pa gumawa ng essay, kasi yung topic natin ngayon ay 
vocabulary for IELTS lang. Ang itinuro ko are methods, how to use words and phrases um, properly so that when you make your report, when you make an essay, when you undergo the interview in the speaking test, you know how to use words and phrases properly. Pero yung tamang paggawa ng writing, it follows a certain surefire ways. May sinusundan po tayong specific na method. Paano po siya gawin ng tama? Okay, so hindi po muna kita paggagawain ng essay just because I haven't taught you how to. Okay, so individualized naman po ang ating lecture. So ngayon po tayo ay merong Ah. Uh, no araw ay Mercury's. Ngayon po ay meron tayong vocabulary. Tapos Thursday po ay magkakaroon tayo ng computer map para naman sa listening, reading and writing. Pupunta po kayo dito, dalawang batch po 'yan, 9 AM, 9 slots. Tapos 1 PM, 9 slots available. Palagi po tayong Tuesday and Friday nagkakaroon ng schedule sa computer ma with the exception of tomorrow because I have very important matter to attend to para wala lang tayong uh, dead day. Parang wala lang tayong patay na araw para tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya. No? Tapos sa Friday, babalik po tayo para naman sa mistakes in speaking or common mistakes in speaking yung buong title ng kanyang uh, schedule. And Saturday, major lecture in writing. So if you want to know how to write an essay, if you want to enhance your skills further in writing an essay, this is the lecture specifically designed for you. So nakadesign po yung ating lecture na yung minor ay nakalagay sa gitna ng linggo at yung major ay nakalagay po sa Sabado para yung mga students natin na Sabado lang nakakapasok ay may pagkakataon silang maka-attend ng importanteng lecture. Okay? So, para po sa mga students natin, si Zarina, si Karen, si Marian, si Maricris, si Nelson, si Renato, thank you po for attending our Zoom discussion today. If you have any question, you can send us a message either on Discord and Facebook. Have a nice day. God bless and good luck on your exams. Bye-bye.